But welcome back to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Uh, this is your home of credible, factual and balanced news. Don't forget to send your messages to our Facebook page at Africa Young Voices Media Empire Facebook page and we'll take them as we go along with the program this morning. Now in the studio we have been joined by Ambassador Amaya Dennis Toure popularly known as Cal De Nero, the hip-hop artist, and he's here to talk about his plans as Ambassador of Entertainment and Investment and also the implementation of a national playlist which he just announced recently. Good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you for being a part of the program this morning. Thank you. Right, uh, you were appointed as um, an envoy to the president regarding entertainment and investment in Sierra Leone back in March. And um, it's been uh, over six months now. Um, how has the journey been so far and what, um, have, what have you achieved so far as part of your mandate under this role? Well, um, I can say there's been a lot of planning going on, behind the scenes planning. You know, um, I believe for you to succeed and execute things, you have to do proper planning. So that, that has been what I've been engaging on, you know. Um, seeing how best we can set up structures, you know, within the entertainment industry, you know. Like I said on my last interview, I created a board, you know, and um, now we've extended it to the provinces. We have committees all over in Bo, Kenema, McKinney, and we're planning to do Kono and Lunge. Mm. So, because um, we need representation in all these areas. Because um, entertainment is not just free town, so we can be able to, you know, get some of the talents from this countryside, you know. Um, so I've been doing a lot of planning, and um, now it's um, we're at the stage of executing, you know. And uh, as you know, you know, dealing with government, it takes time for things to unfold, you know. So I think we are in good footing. Mm -hmm. Interesting, and um, uh, you know, a lot of the people you appointed um, as board members, you appointed uh, board members, um, you know, and you have come under criticism for firing some of them. Uh, could you just, you know, talk about um, why, your, uh, why you first of all appointed board members and what their mandate really is and why there's been so much controversy uh, around your board? Well, um, you know, first of all, when I was appointed, Maybe if I was a selfish person, I would have just handled this job alone and mm. just engage people when the need arise, you know. But I um, thought about it and I realized that it's good to be inclusive, you know, to work with other entertainers. So I set up the board involving people from the film sector, the comedy sector, um, the producers, DJs, so we can all work together because um, it will be very difficult for me to, you know, do this alone. Um, but in that process, you tend to invite um, different people that you don't know. You don't know their background, you don't know their political affiliations, you know. So um, it was a test case. You know, I invited people so we can all work and then I will be able to identify those that are more committed, you know. Mm. So um, I ran through a lot of issues. You know, we created a board group where we really engage on ideas, how we can um, restructure the industry. Um, I remember I had a conversation with one of the board members where I was um, unfolding my agenda and he looked me in my face and told me that's a 50-year dream. It's not possible. You know, so I realized that he doesn't believe in my vision. You know, he feels like um, nothing can really work in Sierra Leone. So someone like that, you know, I had to excuse him. You know, um, some other individuals in the board, I will really give them tasks. You know, um, like we had a scenario where we had a board member that was part of the AYV team. And um, while I was trying to unveil the playlist system, I gave her the task for her to really just see how she can pitch it in, you know, with the entertainment news of AYV, and I was boldly told to do it myself, you know, and, you know, countless scenarios of engaging board members, I realized that the commitment is not there. Mm. So is, is, those is this perhaps because the, the, the role you're playing now doesn't have a, a, a mandate designed not just for you as the ambassador, but also for board members who you, uh, who you uh, call up to the table to perform certain tasks. So if you give someone a job and they feel like they are not meant to do this, then they would challenge the authority with which you are speaking. Is this, is this really the problem? Well, um, maybe it might be, but um, I feel like as adults and grown-ups, we all kind of understand why we were part of the board. You know, um, 
anybody that's part of AYV that was invited to be part of the board, your task is to make sure that, you know, you advocate when it comes to media issues um, relating to the board and entertainment. You know, other people are doing that. You know, Tamba B at um, Air Radio, DJ Kalox, you know, we have King Fisher, King Milan. You know, they are really um, pushing the agenda forward in their different platforms. So um, I think um, definitely there's a lot of trust issues, you know, because Cyrilline is very political, unfortunately. You know, even in entertainment, we're dealing with that um, virus right now where people are very, very politically connected to where if they're not on your side of politics or they thinking that they're not on your side of politics, mm. they don't want to work with you. They might pretend that they want to work with you, but they would rather sabotage what you're trying to do. Mm. And as you talk about politics, that is very critical. I mean, right. you mentioned one of the board members from AYV. I'm going to be um, very specific, Phoebe and Swoyo. Right. And according to her, the allegation why she was fired is because, oh, um, she posted something against the SLPP government and that got you upset. And nothing like um, she was given a task to perform and she didn't. So it was politics because, ah, Cardinero is SLPP. Cardinero doesn't want me to to express my, my will respective of politics. So he's upset. I'm thinking that, oh, if I'm a board member and I say something against um, the current system, the but system will not work. posted something which yeah. may have been perceived to be against the, the, uh, the, system. Well, the system. It was not solely about that. Mm -hmm. It was um, because of other um, previous you know, engagement with her. Right. Um, I remember she needed help in the, like, in the first instance one time about um, a show that she was involved with. She contacted me to see how best I can advise, and I, I gave her my um, candid advice. I was in the States then. Mm -hmm. Then um, she had another scenario where she had some um, people, entertainment people in Nigeria, I believe, that she was trying to bring to Sierra Leone for an award or something like that. She came bluntly um, on the board group and contacted the fame people, you know? So I, I was a little confused, so I asked her the question, um, Sister Swell, the last time we had the same scenario, you contacted me directly, right? She accepted, yes. I said, so why are you doing something different this time? So we had like a back and forth, mm -hmm. you know. Um, then she came to the realization that she was wrong because I gave her instances that, you know, you know how we did it the last time. If you want to do something of, um, regarding entertainment in Sierra Leone, I'm the one to contact. But you can't come right on the board group and sideline me you know, sideline my authority, and then she apologized, saying, oh, I'm sorry. So there's been a lot of instances where I, I don't know if it was intentional. You know, I don't have no reason to lie. You know, I like Phoebe and Swill. She's a friend of mine. You know, she's, she has emceed some of my shows as an artist, you know. Um, I was even trying to do a documentary in the past about my life. She was going to um, do the voiceover of that. I even drove her to Lunge. She knows the house where I was born, you know. So this is how far we go back. But when it comes to issues like this, you know, I want to be very firm, you know, because I really want to succeed. You know, I don't have no room for sabotage and undermining like they say in Creo. You know, I want everybody on the team to have the same commitment, right. you know. Mm -hmm. let, let, let's, let, let's talk about the, play, the national playlist system, um, which you're trying to institute. Uh, again, that has come under, I mean, many people are criticizing that, thinking that, oh, wow. The ambassador hasn't got the authority to actually create a national playlist system. I mean, we live in a free market economy where an artist would just go to the studio, record his song. I mean, meet a DJ or promoter to promote that song and all of that. And um, we do not need, I mean, a vetting committee to vet the songs. Are they good? Are they fit for purpose? So, so take us through the steps in establishing that playlist. Well, there? really, I believe, um, you know, that's the main reason why I'm appointed, you know, because um, people have realized that things are not the way we, they're supposed to be. You know, Sierra Leone music, you can't compare now the state of um, the status of our industry to the early 2000s, you know, when a lot of artists was putting out hit songs, you know, everybody was hardworking. Um, so I realized that once I, I assumed um, the appointment, I realized that the first thing to do is to see how best we can scrutinize things, you know. I feel like the talented artists are not threatened about this. You know, they actually supported it. They really, really want to thrive. The ones that are really nitpicking and pointing fingers and opposing are really the people in Creole you call dragman DJs that feel like the system will really block them out to where they can't make no 
200, 300,000 news from artists, struggling artists. Mm -hmm. You know, the artists that are not too confident about their art, they're the ones that are thinking that, they're gonna go, that we're going to kick them out. No, you might not be on a first playlist. Mm -hmm. But now, if you have somebody to look at you in your face and tell you that you didn't succeed on this one, go back to the studio and work harder. Mm -hmm. I think next time when you come, you come with that, you know, anger and, and thirst to prove people wrong, you know? So we want to create a standard situation. I think the playlist system is appropriate for Sierra Leone. And um, actually this weekend we're doing the first reviewing, you know, me um, along with the DJs, the producers, um, the studio engineers, some veteran artists, we vet in the songs. We have over 300 songs submitted and we're going to break it down to 50. We've already contacted IMC, the regulators of um, TVs and radios, and they are ready to work with us to see how best this can be mandatory. Well, and, yes, go ahead, okay. No, uh, the uh, point you mentioned about a lot of people questioning uh, why you're doing this and whether you do have the authority to do this comes back to um, what I said before with regard to your mandate. I mean, if we look at the uh, uh, appointment uh, release statement that was put out uh, um, from the government, it says your um, duties are the following, promoting Sierra Leone's business, products and entertainment interests abroad, identifying entertainment and investment opportunities in emerging and growth uh, for the attention of the appropriate authorities and any other duties assigned by His Excellency the President from time to time. Right. So is this one of the duties assigned to, the, to you There's by the President? There's one word in that statement that you read, which is growth. Growth meaning entertainment growth. You know, for entertainment to grow in Sierra Leone, mm. we have to really, really make sure that the best content comes out. You know, we have the right artists representing Sierra Leone. You know, um, it has to be a joint effort. You know, Caldinero can't do it alone. So in that word, growth, I, I identify that. For us mm. to have growth in entertainment, we really have to scrutinize the content that we put on the radio that represents Sierra Leone internationally. You know, as much as I like to go out there and search for investors, you know, um, I want to have a very good representation of our music on the internet and, you know, globally, so that investors can be um, at ease coming to Sierra Leone to invest. Mm. You, you, you mentioned you've already engaged IMC, the uh, media regulator in Sierra Leone. And the IMC, we, the, the IMC has an act that's created it, and uh, of course there's also a code of practice for us, I mean, med media practitioners and media houses. Right. And um, it's clearly, I mean, there are clear provisions that um, there are things we can breach that the IMC can actually hold us for. But for example, now you're setting up that national playlist system, and you've gotten, say, 50 songs, and um, those who are out of that playlist, they will come to AYV, so long as they do not breach any, I mean, editorial troubles, AYV can, can go ahead and hear that, and the IMC hasn't got any power to come and say, oh, AYV, why did you hear Caldinero's song when that song is not on the playlist? Mm -hmm. So how does it work? Again, it still boils down to policy, regulation, and all of that. Well, I feel like artists still have the free will to promote their content, you right. know, even if they're not on the playlist. Mm -hmm. But their content um, will not be prioritized. Right. You know, that's the only difference, right. you know. Right. You still have the freedom, nothing changes. Right. We're not really saying these, this is be it all, mm -hmm. end it all. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have the freedom of promoting your content. Individually, they can Individually, do that. Individually, you can right. do it. Even the yeah. artists on the playlist, yeah. you know, it's still their responsibility to go out there and promote their content mm -hmm. and still contact the DJs. The, the playlist is just a validation to say that, okay, you know, I'm confirmed. These are best of the best songs yes, to be promoted. I'm among the best, you know. Mm. I, I'm, I've been approved. Right. So you can use that with, as bragging rights, mm. you mm. know. Mm. And we are going to really push the playlist so that radio stations and TVs can really prioritize those. Right. And um, actually, I spoke with a marketer because I realized the problem in Sierra Leone Entertainment, the reason mm. why mm -hmm. uh, um, creative people are not making a cent out of their work mm. is because of marketing. The marketing of Sierra Leone and content in Sierra Leone is run by foreigners. You know, I, I, ironically, you know, I will be specific, Nigerians. Yeah. They're the ones that really uh, distribute all our movies, our music. So I had a very good conversation with a Sierra Leonean brother who is very passionate about marketing. He has um, some of the machines that duplicate this stuff. So um, we're trying to unveil like a boot system all over the country, some from Freetown, where um, those boots, that's where like the Iroko TV mm -hmm. booth, 
So we're trying to have that kind of system here in Sierra Leone where all the fans will be really advised or encouraged to engage those people to purchase Sierra Leonean content. Then, you know, there will be royalties paid mm. to the um, creative people. You know, um, I feel like this is just a start. But as we go along, we're learning, and I believe that we we'll navigate properly. These right. are brilliant initiatives to actually get, I mean, um, those in the creative industry to, at the end of the day. Because um, what is said in Sierra Leone is that we do not have um, career, career actors, career right. musicians. I mean, you can be a musician but still engage in something else because you have to survive right. and all of that. Either because of the platform is not there or the, or, or, or the market you, you, you talked about. But the, the biggest piracy at this point it's online. I mean, it's, it, it's the cyber world. So how do you go about handling or, or tackling that? And basically, artists are, or actors across the world are even making money on, on, online compared to the physical, I mean, um, CDs you would want to put out. What, what's the plan? When I assumed the, the position, I was very passionate about um, the online side of things, you mm -hmm. know. But I realized that a country like Sierra Leone, there's still, I would say, a big junk of Sierra Leoneans that still believe in buying CDs. So I was not trying to ignore that element, right. you know. Um, due to my um, observation and mm -hmm. research I've made, mm -hmm. I realized that we have to really tackle the piracy situation, you know, on the ground, on the ground. as we engage the internet. Uh, with regards to the internet, um, like the playlist system, all of the songs selected will be on TuneCore. You know, um, TuneCore is a platform in the States where content is uploaded and they distribute all this content to online stores, say like Apple Music, you know, um, Spotify, YouTube, and all the rest. Mm. And the tune core system, they get a little percentage, and the rest get paid to the artists. You know, a lot of artists are not collecting money from internet um, streaming yeah. and stuff. So we want to create that platform where even with movies, you know, I have a proposal yeah. that has been submitted to me um, with a streaming company in the states. They want to offer giving me um, three channels where Sierra Union movies will be streamed online, you know, to where people in Australia, in Europe, in Canada can go online and mm -hmm. stream our movie. And then the, the, the director or the producer of the movie can collect something, you know. So um, you, you cannot stop online piracy as easy as we think, you know, but we can limit it, right. you know, to where at least the artist gets something back. You know, because it's difficult to stop somebody from yeah. sharing a song on WhatsApp. Right. You know, that, uh, they, they have to, like, they're at home and they have a song in their phone, they will mm -hmm. just send it out. You cannot detect that, you know. But what we can do and what we can detect is maybe, you know, limit the people online that, mm -hmm. you know, like in Sierra Leone, we have a lot of, like, platforms on YouTube mm -hmm. that will just share or upload your content without your permission and they will even monetize it. They are very bold to the point where they will monetize it, receive money from it on a monthly basis. We want to stop those people, right. you know? All right. Um, just to um, add to, you know, when you talk about piracy and um, the advocacy that goes along with it to try to change the attitudes of um, um, Sierra Leoneans, not, not only uh, you talk about Nigerians in Sierra Leone who are involved in marketing and distributing our uh, products, into, in our entertainment products. Um, have you also found a way to involve more Sierra Leoneans into that process? Um, people who are perhaps like-minded with you into, to uh, stop piracy and get our people involved also in distribution and marketing of, of the uh, Sierra Leonean content? Yes, sure. Um, King's Empire is um, a company here in Sierra Leone that I've identified. He, um, the guy that's running that company is a Sierra Leonean and he's very passionate. He was an entertainer. He still does music. So he's passionate about it and he wants to see Sierra Leonean people earn something from what they do, you know? So that's just one person. Um, I believe there's a lot of other Sierra Leoneans that have streaming platforms, you know, like um, Audio Africa, mm -hmm. you know, um, I believe we just have to have the conversation. You know, we have to be professional about things. But most of our people, you know, instead of engaging you so you can have the dialogue mm. and talk about things, they will just attack you indirectly on social media, which is not good for business, you know. Mm. So uh, it's very, very good that we engage each, each other and really express what we have to offer, what we have on the table, you know. So, um, yeah, to prioritize Sierra Leonean distributors mm. and marketers, 
That's the key. But do you think uh, we need to, I'm using the word need because I, I want to emphasize the necessity, that do you think we need to collaborate with Nigerians, being that they're making uh, the headways in terms of representing their country and the continent generally uh, uh, overseas with their content? Do you think we need to collaborate to succeed? Nigerians, I passionately believe that they have this notion of it's either us or nobody. You know, um, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing, but I mm -hmm. feel like they purposely want to dominate it, African music and entertainment. I think it's intentional. It's not a bad thing. I think it's a national mentality that they have to where we are running Africa. We are, run, we are the ones bringing African music to the world, which is good. The only thing I'm not comfortable with it's where the smaller countries in Africa are being blocked out of the game. You know, um, from observing their track record and how they engage and run things in Africa, they're only showing interest to countries that they can do business with, meaning numbers. You know, countries like Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, the bigger countries with, with, with a lot to offer. You know, countries like Togo, Gambia, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, where Cameroon has a, lot, a very high population, mm -hmm. but because they're French and English, so they have this tendency of not really showing too much interest to countries mm -hmm. that are very small. But if, if the motive is for them to make money off of the business they're doing, then these, these are strategic decisions, don't you think? Well, it, it's strategic, but it's not fair. It's very unfair. Because um, if you think about situation in the States, mm -hmm. they want to make money too. You have big record companies, big um, um, institutions. They still go to smaller states, you know, just give them a shot you know, encouraged to do business with them. And you have stars, like Michael Jackson is from Indiana, a very, very small state. If that mentality was in the civilized world, he would have never made it, you know? Like if they had just gone to New York, the biggest states well, the context engage, is, is, a, is a bit you know? different. So if you're, if you're taking Michael Jackson as, a, as an example, right. he, even though he came from a small state, groomed himself to become such an iconic and global star. So is it a matter of Sierra Leoneans uh, taking up that responsibility to groom ourselves, to groom our own artists as well and boost them so that they also become exactly what iconic stars? Do. But th the question yeah. I ask now is whether as Sierra Leoneans we need to collaborate with Nigerians, Nigerians. in order to succeed because are we saying that Michael Jackson, coming from Indiana, had to collaborate with maybe artists from bigger states, musicians from bigger states, for him to succeed? That's the comparison well, I I'm making. I think in negotiation, when you come to the table best prepared, you, 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 you have a, a word, you know, you have some mm. key um, power to pull. I think we have to prepare ourselves. Mm. How we can prepare ourselves is by creating our own market. You know, I keep saying this. How can we create our own market? By uniting with Liberia, Gambia, Guinea, the Ivory Coast, the Mano River. Gambia is not part of the Mano River, mm. but we can incorporate them. You know, to where we, they see strength in numbers. If mm. they realize that this part of West Africa is united as one, they are regulating their industry as one, they have their own TV platform. Like, when you need someone and they realize that you need them, your negotiating terms change. You know, mm. right now we are so much in desperate need, running to Nigeria, knocking on their doors. You know, they, they, they're not taking it seriously. You mm. know, they will just engage you based on business, what they can get from you passionately. But if we situate ourselves to where we have our own trace, you know, mano, like the East Africans have trace Mzika, you know, that plays videos from Guinea, from Liberia, from Gambia, from Ivory Coast and Sierra Leone, now the Nigerians will be coming to us because they want to engage our market. They, mm -hmm. they will realize that, you know, we need these people. But right mm -hmm. now, we're not in good bargaining time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well uh, we're going to take a quick break. It's 9.30 in our studios. We'll be right back with Wake Up Sierra Leone. Get all your breaking, factual and balanced local and international news from AYB Direct to your mobile phone via SMS. To subscribe on Afrosol, send star to 298 and stay connected for only 300 leons per day. 
coming up on AYV's NT News Now. Musa Tumbo retracts his statements. Natasha Beckley's Freetown The Recipe album out now. Plus, Leon stars learn their fate at the AFCON 2021 draw in Cameroon and much more. Well done, I'm Harai Bengura and this is AYV ENT News Now. Sierra Leone forward Musa Tombo was earlier dropped from the Lyon star squad due to lack of discipline, according to the head coach John Keister. The star then did a live video denying the allegation, stating that they were untrue. Well, it seems that Musa Tombo has had a change of heart as he has now apologized to coach John Keister for what he said in the video. Here's more. Musa Noah Kamara, alias Musa Tombo, was the Golden Boot winner for the 2019 Sierra Leone Premier League season, bagging 15 goals under his belt. The star threw his great display at Eastern Lions Football Club, gained fame across the country, doing all he can as a footballer to continue playing the beautiful game. The star is also the most expensive signing ever in the history of this country, moving from East End Lions to Bow Rangers for a sum worth over 200 million Leones, including two players. Well, the star has faced a series of backlash from fans after he replied to Leon star head coach Keister after the Leon star coach accused him of lack of discipline. The star at first denied the allegations, but Musa Tumbo now has apologized to the head coach for his actions after calling John Keister a liar on video. Um, I do this short video to apologize to the head coach, Rina Jokisa Rina Mitadi. Um, Jokisa is a very nice coach. They left today. The people in Sabri Musa Tumura, the one of the world, and Jokista. I'm very, very sorry for the video we I make against them. Um, that video I do out of anger. So it's like Salon, people that wanna help me for big Jokista for me, for make you forgive me. But I do against them. This is what we want to see, unity in the team. Like they say, teamwork makes the dream work. The most anticipated and talked about album that we have all been waiting for is finally out now. Freetown, the recipe has been served up by the queen herself, Natasha Beckley. Here are more details. Popular female rapper Natasha Beckley has officially released her album Freetown The Recipe. For those following the story of the most anticipated album by Natasha Beckley, it was a journey as we saw lots of social media posts by Natasha herself regarding the delay of the album, the struggles she faced, and lots more. But she has been steadfast in wanting to give her fans nothing but absolutely the best. She's collaborated with national and international stars and produce music videos that hit the internet like wildfire. And not to mention those behind the scene photos. Mm -mm -mm. Freetown the recipe. Fans can't wait to taste the meal. So there you have it guys. The album we've all been waiting for is out now by the diva Natasha. I mean even popular Nigerian musician Magneto has even stated that he thinks she is the best female rapper in Africa. And judging by the album, he didn't miss a beat. Congratulations Queen on such a powerful album. Sierra Leone will be participating in the AFCOM 2021 competition for the very first time after 25 years. The competition's draw was held on Tuesday in Cameroon with Sierra Leone set to battle in the group stages along with Algeria, Ivory Coast and Equatorial Guinea all in Group E for a place to the round of 16. Here's more. The African Cup of Nations is the biggest and most prestigious football tournament in the whole of Africa. The competition, which is held every two years, is set to be held in January 2022 in Cameroon. The competition hosts 24 African countries around the continent, and this is the first time after 25 years that Sierra Leone will be participating. Sierra Leone booked their place at the AFCON competition after beating Benin in Guinea, courtesy of Kaikama 
Kamara's goal from the penalty spot. Sierra Leone has been drawn in Group E along with Ivory Coast, Algeria, and Equatorial Guinea on Tuesday in Cameroon as Leon stars learn their fate as to which opponents they will be facing come January. Many Sierra Leonean footballers like Kai Kamara, Buya Ture, and others responded to the draw very well as they shared their views on their social media handles. All the best to those Leon stars. <laughs> yeah, man. Now it's time to put in the hard work behind the scenes for the AFCOM 2021 in Cameroon. We pray for the very best to come in January as we will be putting on our green, white and blue jerseys to support our darling Leon stars to bring it all the way home. the special update. The entertainment and investment ambassador Cal De Nero together with Nigga Don, Empress P, Del Vacchio, GP, Macmude and Rosé have released a song titled Pay You Tax. This song was sponsored by the National Revenue Authority, NRA, sensitizing Sierra Leoneans on why it is important to pay your taxes and boy is it important. Let's get a quick play of the song and while at it, do ensure to pay your tax. Hey yo, what up? I, Kyle De Niro, and every artist on the song, we pay our taxes. Before we even do a show, check with NRA. Let's go. The NRA institution is based on integrity, transparency, accountability, equity, discipline, collaboration, staff development, service excellence. When they show more, really be greater. message there from our amazing stars. Well, that's all for AYV ENT News now. To find out more, always stay glued to AYV's entertainment channel, Channel 34. Don't forget to like our Facebook page at AYV Entertainment and also follow us on Instagram at AYV Sierra Leone. Before I go, please remember to be safe, wash your hands, please, and do not shake hands or touch one another. And make sure you do use hand sanitizer throughout your wonderful and amazing day. If you are feeling sick, be sure not to come into contact with anyone and go straight to the doctor or call 117. And please remember, social distancing is always key, my loves. Until next time, I'm Harai Bengura saying goodbye. Hey there, thanks for watching and keeping it locked to AYV TV channel 34. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is AYV Media Empire. And go follow us right now on all our other social media platforms for more great ENT News Now content, from breaking stories to top exclusive interviews. Well, welcome back. Um, we still have Ambassador Caldo Nero with us in the studio discussing his plans um, for the growth of the entertainment industry. And um, we've, we've talked about um, the representation. Let's, let's talk about a bit about investment in the, in, the, in the sector because that is very critical. If we're to get things right, it takes resources, it takes money and the right investment to thrive. Um, what are the plans? What have you done to, to secure or, or ensure that that part is also being addressed? Well, um, recently um, I've engaged the government. You know, um, we've been making strides. You know, um, mm. we're at the point now where we are very close for us, the entertainers, to have our own directorate, you know. Um, pretty soon that announcement will come out. Mm -hmm. um, these have been the things I've been, because um, the government doesn't fund an ambassador. Right. You know, um, actually this government, you know, they're very particular about where they put funds into things, in, you know, in society. It's not like in the past where money is just taken and handed to an individual to go do things, you know. So um, they're very particular and they know what they're doing. So we're at the point now where we'll have our own directorate to where um, these directorate will handle entertainment affairs and the programs that we want to unveil can be funded you know, appropriately. Um, with regards to um, investment, in October, actually the MOU are signed in the States. Mm -hmm. We're working on, um, I've just received the invitation letter for 25 members of the entertainment industry to travel to the States. So um, this week coming, I'll be involved in seeing how best we can secure these visas, you know, so they can be part of the Back to My Road Festival in Baltimore. You know, um, the essence of the Back to My Road Festival 
is to lure um, investors to come into Sierra Leone. Like in Ghana, they had the, the day of the homecoming, mm. where we saw Akon, Beyonce, all these big stars going, flooding into Ghana, you know? And what does that bring to Ghana? It brings um, investment, you know? People might fall in love with Accra and decide to buy a duplex over there or start a business. So we want to replicate, even though I, I believe I had that idea like five, six years before, you know, back to my roots, where we can get African Americans to come to Sierra Leone, you know, in the face of a uh, festival at the Tokyo Beach, you know, say we have two, three um, American celebrities, you know, I'm not saying Nigerian celebrities because that has been done. And no disrespect to my Nigerian counterparts or brothers, but it's overdone, you know. It doesn't benefit Sierra Leone in any way, you know. So I want to engage the American artists that we can bring to Sierra Leone. And from that, you know, we can have the exposure. Imagine an artist how, how, like Mary how J. Can you, how can you say that, you know, that doesn't benefit Sierra Leone in any way anymore? Um, right here, as we speak... Most Sierra Leoneans do listen to Nigerian music, right. and this has been the tra tra trajectory for such a long time. And you cannot deny that you said it yourself, that Nigeria is making headway and they are dominating the continent. We just saw um, Bono Boy winning Grammy, we, Wizkid has won. You know, it's, 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 it's a fact that you cannot deny. Right. So how can such a country who is making big strides on the continent and across the globe not have an impact on what we do here in Sierra Leone and how can we say we will not benefit anything from them? Well, we have to be nationalistic, you know. Um, you can still work with Nigerians, but from a nationalistic perspective, you know, to where you're promoting your own interests and prioritizing your, in your own interests first, you know. Um, I believe the South Africans are doing that. They're engaging Nigerians, but they are prioritizing the South African interests. We cannot engage them and just let go of ourselves, meaning we're trying to sound like them, meaning we're running, knocking on their doors, meaning they're not doing the flip side of it to where mm. they're promoting our interests. I'll give you a very good example of who does it very good. The country in West Africa that does it, they deal with Nigeria, but they are promoting their own national interests. It's Ghana. So why do you think Nigerians respect Ghanaians? They come to them with respect, you know, because the Ghanaians, they are promoting their own interests. Ghana, you know, they so know well, Burna Boy well, is bigger than, he's way bigger than Shatawali. But in Ghana, if you go there, they will not put Burna Boy over Shatawali. So that's different then. Instead of saying uh, we would not collaborate with them and it would not no, benefit. I'm not saying that we're not it would not benefit but that's what you said it just now. It would that not it would benefit not, it would us be because of their so own it, approach. Yeah, it's, so it's about our approach if we are making the move, isn't it? Yeah, but mm. I think we'll benefit more dealing with um, black Americans. You know, that has been my, I, that's why my first trip was not to go to Nigeria or Lagos. Mm. My first trip was to go to America, engage, you know, black Americans. Yesterday I had a Zoom meeting with, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Q from 112. 112 mm. was a group signed to Bad Boy. I had a, a Zoom meeting with his manager. I've already had um, commitments from Egyptian, the Jamaican artist, you know, the dancehall artist. Right. He's going to be part of the Back to My Root Festival. You know, um, he's doing a, a video drop for our playlist system soon that will be on social media. So um, I feel like we have more to gain and then we'll be part of the conversation if we take this approach of trying to broaden the opportunities for Sierra Leone globally. Instead of just focusing, because a lot of Nigerian artists have been brought here. What did we benefit? I think people really do it out of just bragging rights. Now, me bring Kiss Daniel, or now me bring this Nassalon. You know, that's played out. We really have to um, engage in meaningful, you know, engagement with um, international outlets. Mm. Just before I take a few messages, the number counts, like you mentioned earlier. Right. Um, we're just a nation of a little over 7 million. So um, the question I want to ask, because even in national investments, investors will look at the, fee, the, the numbers. What am I going to gain investing in, in a country uh, I mean, of 7 million people when I have a country with over 200 million people, right. a bigger market and all of that? So this, call, I mean, this um, network you're trying to build with Romano River um, Union countries and you're trying to include Gambia, how far have you gone with plants? Because that can actually help even in the energy um, sector. Kind of was mentioned in that when investors were looking at, oh, what am I, I mean, given this amount of wattage for 7 million people, I'm not going to get the money. So how, how far are you? Well, investors are smart people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes the negotiation, um, 
you know, um, you're negotiating um, highlighting points. It's entertainment. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, they'll be looking at minerals, diamonds. Right. They'll be looking at other opportunities in Sierra Leone that, you know, interest them. Mm -hmm. But in their bid to get to that interest, you can pitch in entertainment. You can pitch in other sectors that can be of um, importance to your own uh, advantage, you know? So that's where Sierra Leone comes in. Right. As much as we are 7 million people, but we have the most precious diamonds in the world. You know, we have the best uh, beaches here for tourism. We have all the things that we are strong in. We can use that advantage to lure them into investing in entertainment. And like GS Victory, that's the approach. Yeah. That has been my strategy. You know, they are very interested in other areas in Sierra Leone, not just entertainment. But entertainment I want to be conduits. able to get the best out of that engagement for entertainment yeah. as much as they can engage other ministries you know to get what they want you mm -hmm. know all right um after talk is saying very good most Sierra Leonean musicians want to rap beef each other play political music while a large number of nigerian musicians have stuck um to afro beats and the grant is saying ambassador please bless us with that stress a song before you go thank god it's friday um, we claim Sierra music is not played, but the industry is not empowered. Christopher Awololo Refer. Um, ambassador, maybe. Um, okay, this is not too clear. Um, let me go through. That's another problem regulation. Once we can regulate and get all stakeholders involved and they abide by the rules set, then maybe there is hope. We must abide by the rules and regulations set. Ronald George Stone um, sent in that one. My Country Entertainment Ambassador, you're impress, uh, you impressing all lovers of selling music. We're impressed of you, Michael Sam. Will you include Boss LA on that list to Baltimore come November? Eddie Grant is asking. That is very important because, yes. Um, Abdullah B. Lukulu is saying, big thanks to Cardinero for your strong commitment to our entertainment industry in Sierra Leone. God bless you and give you 